Hello and welcome along to the next episode of my camper conversion YouTube channel. So today's video is going to be fitting a couple of large 270 watt solar panels to a Mercedes Trekker mobility minibus that I'm currently converting into what's going to be pretty much a home on wheels by the time I'm finished with it. Now with the two panels here this is going to provide 540 watts so over half a kilowatt of charging power. I've also got a Victron 70 amp MPPT, uh, one of the smart blue solar controllers and that's going to be getting wired in, into these as well. I bought the one with the uh, MC4 connections already built into the controller as well so it's just going to be a case of plugging in the cables once these are mounted on the roof. Now I did have a little issue with uh, getting them sized on the roof, it was either a case of having them side by side and they would have overhanged ever so slightly on both sides or to have them behind each other I would have had to have removed uh, one of the skylights and that's exactly what I've just done I've taken the rear skylight out from what's going to be the bedroom that's been sealed over with a nice thick layer of perspex with a full layer of mastic and tiger seal all the way around just to be sure that there's definitely going to be no leaks on that and that's just got a couple of weights just on the top weighing that down because I did that just a couple of hours ago so I'm just giving the tiger seal 100% chance just to fully cure up before I take the weights off as well. Now because I've taken that skylight out I have still left enough space just for a smaller 28cm skylight at the very back and that will fit with the solar panels on top but unfortunately with that big one in place it was 5cm too short for the planned layout that I've got for the panels so it had to go and I didn't really want that bigger skylight in over the bed anyway so as I say that's been removed ready to be fitted over and when the panel's in place, the panel will actually go over the top of this uh, hole that's being cut out, so it'll be fully protected uh, from any impact as well, because if there's going to be any big hailstones or anything like that, it's only just going to hit the solar panel that's going to be mounted above it. So up on the roof, I've already spent a good hour up here cleaning all of the roof. I don't know when the last time it was actually cleaned down. It must have been many, many, many years ago, because as you can see, I've already cleaned up to the front skylight and that's the years of muck that still has to be cleaned off but I've cleaned everywhere where the panels are going to go that's the main thing and I will get around to cleaning the rest of it once the panels are in place I just want to get the panels on while the weather's nice so the two panels are going to mount side by side one in front of the other and I say it's going to completely cover that uh, rear skylight as well so that'll be hidden over from above and underneath when all of the ceiling cladding is up for the bedroom I've got solar brackets ready to mount them and, and because they're just going into a fiberglass roof they're going to have securing wooden battens spanning pretty much the entire uh, width of the roof just for security more than anything else just because the fiberglass isn't as secure as steel would be so it's going to be a case of plenty of securing, uh, securing braces underneath for the brackets once they're in place it's going to be a case of drilling a couple of holes to get the cables down connect them up to the controller connect them up to the battery and that'll be it. So I'm going to crack on, get some tools out, get the safety gear out, get the rest of the uh, stuff out for the panels, get the brackets out, this, that, the other, and we'll get cracked on. So there's all of the mounting feet mounted onto both of the panels. So that's 10 securing feet per panel. So once these are in place, they're not going to be moving at all. So now it's just going to be a case of manhandling them back up onto the roof, getting them in exactly where I actually want them positioned up, get lots of holes screwed through into the ceiling of the actual bus. And then we'll get them mounted in and see what they look like. So it's coming along, I say, now it's just a case of getting them onto the roof and drill lots and lots of holes.
So I'm just about to start drilling through for the brackets for the solar panels and I've just cut down some 12mm strips uh, just for internal bracing as well so every single bolt that's going to be coming through will be going through the uh, additional wood bracing inside as well and all that will do will basically spread the entire load of the uh, panels on the roof all the way across using the wood rather than just on individual tiny little bolt holes which might have slowly started to wear, wear away at the fiberglass just because fiberglass isn't as strong as steel in regards to uh, just slightly chipping away things like that so it's always going to be best if you're mounting uh, panels to fiberglass roofs to try and get them braced on the on the underside just to try and take a lot of the stress and strain away from the actual fiberglass itself because as you can see there's a little bit of flex in it so the more bracing and support you can give the actual bolts coming through the better really so now these are pretty much just held in place so i can get up on the roof and start drilling some holes through and hopefully with these little stilts in place it'll hold the ply in place at the same time so i'll be able to drill through the uh, fiberglass roof through the ply get the bolts in place on the top and start doing them up from underneath and obviously it'll be a hell of a lot easier with two people but i'm just trying to show what you can actually achieve with just one person and just cracking on so I'll get up on the roof, start drilling a lot of holes, and we'll get them all secured in, and get the, uh, the panels fully secured. Right, so there we go that's all of the holes drilled for all of the bolts to go through before i put any of the bolts in though i'm first going to run a full bead of sealant all the way around the uh, holes where they're going to be going through underneath the brackets so when the bracket pushes down it's going to basically squish sealant all the way around the holes as well then once the bolts are through i'll also be covering the tops of the bolts with more sealant just to be more than 100 percent sure that as it's a I do not want water getting into any of these holes at all whatsoever so i'm going to be overly abundant with the sealant now i've got some tiger seal sealant i'll put links in the descriptions for everything that i'm using within this uh, install the solar panels the brackets the solar controller even the sealant everything i'll using i'll put links in the description the tiger seal is black so it might be a little bit uh, messy just after it's all done but it's paintable anyway so after it's all done and it's all had a good time to cure up and everything's in place i'll probably go over and give it all the painting anyway so first things first as i say i'll get some sealant out and lift all the panels up and run full beads around every single hole that i've just drilled through under the brackets and get it all sealed in
So and now all the panels are bolted in place through all the supporting ply as well. I'm just going to go back up onto the roof and put another cap of sealant over the bolts as well. Just, I mean, this is already going to be waterproof, watertight, but I just want to be 100% sure that there's going to be absolutely no chance that there's going to be any leaks at all whatsoever. So there's already sealant underneath the brackets, the sealant going through the hole with the nuts, sealant around the top of the nuts with the washer, and I said just to be 100% sure, beyond, I'm now just going to pop up and put a cap of sealant over the top of the nuts as well. And then as I said, there should be absolutely zero chance of any water ingress coming through here. And that'll be some fully secured solar panels bolted onto the roof. Right, so there we go, that's how I've mounted my two 270 watt solar panels on the roof. As you can see, overnight the birds have been at it, so they already need a clean already, but it's always going to be the case. I'm also going to have to get back up here and give the rest of the roof a good clean, because it's quite clear where I cleaned up to, and where there's still, I don't know how many years worth of dirt and grime that's still waiting to be cleaned off. But I'm really, really happy with how this has gone in. I'm more than happy that these are going to be more than secure they're not going to be letting any water in as i say i've been beyond uh, cautious on every single hole that i've drilled whether it's been for the junction box or for any of the uh, brackets for the solar panels so the solar panels have actually got 20 nuts and bolts through i've got 10 brackets on each and each bracket has two bolts going in and as i say every single one has been sealant three times under the bracket under the washer then above on top of the nut and washer as well so as i say there should be zero chance of any water ingress at all whatsoever and that junction box has been given an ultra big smothering both around the hole and then around the outside of the box as well so as you can see if you just stood by the side of the bus you can't see the panels at all which is exactly what I wanted it's why I, I had to end up taking the rear skylight out because otherwise the both panels would have overhang on each side and I just didn't like the look of that as I said it's a lot nicer neater looking at the moment now with the panels where they are you need to really step back away from the van to even see that there's any panels in it but if you were just walking past it on the street as I say there's just no sign of them at all so they're really well hidden away really secure watertight so the only thing I've got left to do now is connect the MC4 cables down to the solar controller. Now I'm not going to do that now, I'm going to be covering that in a different video when I cover more of the electrics in one go. Because I've got a Victron 70 amp MC4 controller. Now it would have been easier, uh, well potentially easier, to have just put a Y splitter on the two panels and just have one set of cables coming down. But this particular controller, because it's rated for the high amperage, it has two MC4 inputs directly for the panels, so I'm just going to run a set of cables directly down from each panel into each input, and the controller itself will do all of the calculations, all of the charging. Really, really heavy duty. They don't really show how big these controllers are in the photos, Joe. So, just for comparison, there's a set of E defenders, and I say that's how just how big this controller is compared to some of the Chinese ones that you see where they're a daft little tiny little box 
really big, really chunky, big heavy heat sink on the back as well, so you know it means business. I see I've got a lot of other Victron stuff that's going to be going in as well. I've got a, a Compact Multi Plus, which is the inverter and battery charger in one. I've got the Color CCGX control panel. I've got some marine grade, uh, stupidly large AGM batteries as well. So all of that's going to be getting covered when I've actually got some units to put them all in. At the moment I haven't got anywhere to mount the controller to, so this is going to be it for this video. Just for the mounting purposes of the panels, getting them all mounted on, fully secured with all of the bracing panels inside, making sure they're all watertight on the top, and just getting the cables ran down ready roughly to the rough area of where there's going to be some storage cupboards where they're going to be slotted in. So, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it that good old thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and have a look at my channel. I'm documenting everything I've done to this bus and there's another five conversions, job by job, fully documented on my channel as well. So loads of good content on there, plenty more to come as well. So, subscribe, thumbs up, and hopefully I'll see you on the next video of the series. Thanks for watching. Cheers.